January 1944, five years into the Second World War. After initial success on the Eastern Front, the German army was losing. It was reeling from a series of defeats. First, at the Battle of Stalingrad. Then, in the biggest tank battle in history, at Kursk. There, the Germans had been overwhelmed by superior Soviet numbers and firepower. They had retreated to a front line west of the river Dnieper. But they knew it was only a matter of time before the Russians would come at them again. Major General Mungo Melvin is a military strategist and expert on the Eastern Front. The situation facing Army Group South in January 1944 was utterly dire. The troops were overextended, exhausted after a heavy autumn and early winter's fighting, and the Russian onslaught seemed unending. German frontline commanders wanted to withdraw to safer ground, consolidate their positions, and wait for the winter to end. But Adolf Hitler had other ideas. He was determined that the troops hold their current positions and not give up any further ground. He even hoped to drive the Russians back across the Dnieper. Hitler forbade any withdrawal from the sole remaining front left on the Dnieper. Hitler saw it's very important, I think almost for psychological prestige reasons, to keep a so-called fortress Dnieper. He also saw in his grand design this as a springboard for a counteroffensive to reoccupy Kiev. But Hitler was making a terrible mistake. Germans' every move was being watched by one of the finest generals of the Second World War. The Russian Chief of Staff, Marshal Georgi Zhukov. Zhukov had been born into a poverty-stricken peasant family. He had clambered his way up through the ranks of the Red Army. He'd fought in the Russian Civil War while recovering from typhus and had escaped Stalin's purge of the generals. Zhukov was a survivor, and he was renowned for his discipline, severity, and determination. Zhukov was a big bear and a bully of a man, uh, admired by his troops but feared by some of his generals and by his staff. He was also Stalin's most effective military commander. Now, Zhukov saw an opportunity. Part of the German front line forced by Hitler to hold its ground had formed into a salient, sticking out from the rest of the troops. Zhukov had seen something like this before. Battle of Stalingrad, Zhukov had pulled off one of the finest counterattacks of the war. In an epic pincer maneuver, he had used half a million men and tanks to encircle a pocket of Germans in what became known as a Kessel or cauldron. At Stalingrad, Zhukov had trapped 300,000 enemy troops. and slowly squeeze them to death. Now 
this salient seemed the perfect opportunity to ensnare 60,000 German soldiers and do the same thing again. According to Soviet operational art, the, the highest form of generalship was to execute an encirclement operation. The so-called Fortress Nepre at Korsun Shakassi, it was ripe for another encirclement operation. On January the 24th, 1944, Zhukov made his move. He sent in the armies of his two best commanders. In the north was Nikolai Vatutin, with 86,000 soldiers and nearly 200 tanks and self-propelled guns. In the south was Ivan Konyev, with 157,000 men and over 300 tanks. They struck at the base of the salient. Their aim, to cut it off from the rest of the army. This was everything that the commander of Army Group South, Field Marshal Erich von Manstein, had feared. Manstein had long argued that Nepra Fortress was untenable and had ordered, uh, wished to order its withdrawal. I think he also had Stalingrad in mind. Realizing what was happening, Manstein rushed a tank corps to the rescue. But this was winter in the Ukraine, and the inadequate German reinforcements soon hit mud. Four days later, the German counterattack had ground to a halt. The men in the salient could not be reached. On the 28th of January, Zhukov's two armies met. The jaws of the trap were slammed shut. Now, he could begin the squeeze. Konyev was so confident of success that he promised Stalin that not a single Hitlerite or fascist would escape. It seemed that Zhukov had done it again. <laughs> 